Hi guys! Today we'll talk about perhaps the one of the most fascinating traditional bow designs out there, Penobscot bow. We'll discuss its pros and cons, considering many different factors. In the end of the video I'll share my personal opinion on this design, basing on my quite a wide bow building and archery experience. Firstly, let's consider if they can be called traditional at all. As the most sources claim, the first bows of this type appeared just in the beginning of the 20th century, what makes them quite new inventions compared to the whole story of archery. According to the sources, they were used and perhaps invented by one of the Native American tribes named Penobscot. The archery community members have differing opinions both on the origin of this design and its purpose. This type of bow is built from usually two separate ones, the main one and the second much smaller placed on its back. The smaller one is connected with two cables with the proper bow. What has to be emphasized, there are many variations of Penobscot bows, including ones built with much bigger backing bow or even triple bows, as the one you can see in the video. The main purpose of building Penobscot style bows is to make a more powerful weapon from a lower quality wood, as there are some areas where no decent material can be acquired. Putting two lighter bows made from species with poor bow making potential together will result in a deadlier and more efficient weapon. Bows can be joined permanently, but they can also be detachable. This kind of solution makes sense and in particular circumstances can be very beneficial. This more advanced construction can let the bow deal with much more stress. In fact, Penobscot bows considering this aspect were quite similar to cable-backed bows and offer are compared to them. Both these designs are basing on helping to deal with the stress by transferring it either into the second bow or the cable. Ok, let's move on to other potential benefits coming from this design. Penobscot bows can have changeable draw weight, adjusted by stringing the second bow. Moreover, you can dismount them into two completely separate weapons. It might be helpful when customizing the bow to the current situation and needs. Moreover, as I noticed working on Penobscot bows, they follow the string less than similar single bows, therefore have higher initial tension too. These are results of better stress distribution. It can allow to get better performance out of the weapon. On the other hand, there might appear some energy losses coming from two additional bow strings and joining another bow. I haven't tested these bows enough yet to be sure if they are beneficial on this field or not. What can I say is that this kind of design should increase the longevity of the weapon. Now let's move on to the darker side of Penobscot bows. First of all, to build such a weapon it takes much more time and effort spent in the bowler's shop. The craftsman has to build two bows, putting at this double to work in the project. Joining them together, to keep everything on the right place, happens to be quite a challenge too. Also, two additional bow strings have to be made and adjusted right into the particular bow. It results in more time consuming than usual weapon setup required before each use. The more advanced construction results also in more potential points of failure. Penobscot bows are therefore much more vulnerable to any kind of faults, especially their bowstrings. It's the last thing we want during a hunt or practice out in the field. Speaking about it, I have to mention about their decreased usability. Penobscot bows with their particular shape might not be as handy as other bows and less comfortable to use. Ok, so as you can see Penobscot style bows have some serious pros and cons. For me as a boyer and archer, for sure these are not worthy sticks, with spectacular look. They are also something different, often are called first campan bows and bring fantasy vibe to the archery world. Nevertheless, personally, I prefer much simpler solutions like humble flat or long bows. I guess the usability for everyday use is more important for me. That's all for today guys. For more bow making content visit my page and store. The link you can find below the video. Thank you for watching, all the best.